Hello and welcome to your next and possibly last tutorial in c .net level 1 and uh, I hope you're really proud of yourself for making it this far because this is a big accomplishment. Uh, so uh, in this tutorial we're going to be learning about what are we going to make? Oh yeah, um, dates and using dates with the graphical user interface so we have two here, the date time picker and the month calendar but I'm just going to show you this one. So let's click that and I'm also going to show you uh, what was it, track bars and What's the other one? Oh yeah, menu strips. So that's too that's too high because we're going to be adding in menus later. Okay, so yep, this is no joke. It really is April first. Okay, so let's uh, figure out how to create a date because we don't even know how to do that yet. So we won't even use this yet. So in order in order to create a date, just type out date time, and then whatever you want to call that date. So let's just call it today because we want to mess with today. Then we can equal set it equal to date time dot and then use the now property and that's it and now this today will be set equal to whatever this current date in time is and let's create a message box dot show to actually print it so we can print today and since this is a date object we have to actually convert this into a string there we go and let's see what pops up I click enter and we get today's date, April 1st, 2012, at 7.40 p.m. and 4 seconds. Now, look at that 4 seconds. I click it again. Now, it's 13 seconds. That means it's been 9 seconds since the last time I clicked the Enter button. So, it does keep up with you. Because every time you click this button, it's recreating this variable, so or this uh, date object. So, bear that in mind. So, you can actually manipulate them. We, we could just type in today here dot and access one of these, uh, well not one of these, one of these up here, but one of these, but I would rather save that in a separate variable. So let's create a new date time and I'll call it uh, future. And I'll set that equal to today dot, and let's add, let's add years, let's add one year. So in here, just put a one in there. And we'll add one year to it. And let's actually put down an if statement shall we so actually no I should probably show you the future first just so you know it works so I'll throw out future there we go and I'll run this and I click enter and now it's April 1st 2013 so that's really really cool so now we can create an if statement if uh, what we look for if today is less than the future so basically it's today earlier than the future then we should have a message box paste message box that says okay good something like that and let me get rid of all this here it's unnecessary and an else so basically it's going to look to see if it's earlier and if it's not earlier then we're going to have a you're from the future? Some weird example like that. So we press F5 and we run this. We get the OK good because today is earlier than the future. But if we make the future one year behind, negative one, then if we run this, now we get, you're from the future because now, because now, uh, future is now, uh, ahead, so, is now one year back, so that's, that, that, so future is now one year back so now today is no longer ahead of future future is now one year behind today so yeah that's pretty weird but that's pretty much how you use them so let's actually we can actually get rid of this one now let's actually mess with our little uh, what is this design oh now I need to open the designer again um, there we go okay so how would we actually change the value here in uh, how do we do that behind in the code? Well, the value right here, we can actually change the date by looking at the value like this. You can also, I believe you can do it somewhere up here. I guess you can't do it up there. But yeah, you just mess with the value here, and you can change it here, change the months, all of that. And where's the formats? You can also change the formats, change it to short if you want to look at it that way. Um, time, just for the time. And for the custom, in order to mess with the custom, you have to type something up here and go on the internet to look at that because I've never used that before so I don't know any of the codes so just look at date time picker and custom format or something like that so we'll just stick with the long 
So let's change it. So in order to change it, the name of that control is date, date, time picker one dot value, and we can set that equal to let's say today dot add. Let's add days this time, and let's add let's add one day to it, shall we? So we click save, and if we click the button, we should end up adding a day to it. So April first, and now it's April second. But because it's not a static value, it keeps restarting every time you hit the enter button, so it won't keep adding one. So bear that in mind that this today is not static, so that's not it's not going to keep incrementing up on one by unless we do that. So that's all about. I really wanted to show you with the date time time control when you're actually running it, the user can change it themselves, and depending on whatever they select, they could hit a button, and depending what it is, uh, you can do whatever you want inside the code. So that's not too hard. Just look for the date time picker dot value to check whatever they have highlighted inside there. So, so if I did this, I could actually change it to April 10th. Click the enter, and oh, now it went back. But that's because that's because we're looking at the today, so that didn't quite work out. So, uh, so okay. So that's all I really wanted to do for that one. Now the next one I want to show you are track bars. So let me get rid of all the action. No, I can keep all that there. It doesn't matter. So for track bars, track bars. I think we have to go to all windows here and look for H scroll bar. There's the V scroll bar for vertical as well, but I'll just show you the horizontal scroll bar. And let me elongate this thing just a little bit. And depending on what value we have, how far we have, we'll change something that's in the label. So we can have a minimum and a maximum. Minimum is 0 by default, and maximum is 100 by default. The large change is how much it goes over when you click, like, right here. And the small change, which is right here, only increments by just 1, is how much change you have when you actually click the arrow keys. So you know when you click the arrow keys, it increments by 1. If you click, like, over here or something, it moves over a bunch. That's the difference. And it will go from your minimum to your maximum. Excuse me. And as I'll, and the value, we can always have a default value. So I'll put it like 50 or something. And as you can see, we're right in the... It goes a little off in the middle. I don't even know if it goes all the way like it's supposed to. But uh, let's mess with the code. So let's let's see here. Do we want to double click this thing? There we go. So now inside of our school bar, we could say um, have an if... If h scroll bar 1... There it is. Dot value is less than 60. We could have something like that. Then we'll have the label grade, which is what's right above it, equal to F. We could do something like that. Then we can make some else ifs. I'm going to copy this right here. Copy. And I'll throw that in there. Paste. If it's greater than 60. Um, or greater than or equal to 60, and we'll have to throw out another one. So I actually needed a double parentheses there. And we want it to be less than or equal to 70. No, just strictly less than 70. We'll have label grade, so copy, paste. I'm going to copy all of this. Copy. Sorry, this is a little tedious, but yeah. It's it's all it's all for good. So copy, paste. So this is going to be a C, and that up there is going to be a D. That's not going to be enough. So this will be 80. This will be 70. And let's see what else we have. So copy, paste, paste. Then we'll have so we'll have our B and we'll have our A. There we go. So. So this would be 90, and this would be 100. Or less than an equal to 100, so that'll work. And this would be 90, and that will be 80. And there we go, I think all that works. So I click Save, and basically as long as we keep changing the value as we scroll that scroll bar, depending on whatever this is, it's going to execute that code, and it's just going to change the label. So if we run this, nothing there by default, but do we have our F when we're... That's odd. Oh yeah, oh yeah, all of this is F. All the way from zero all the way to whenever it crosses that mid. So there's the D. 
This is the large change when you do that. So because it keeps changing my 10, that means it's automatically going to go to the next letter because there's only 10 points between each uh, letter grade. So. so yeah, there you go. So you can go in between all these depending on whatever the grade is. So that's really, really cool. So that's all I really wanted to show you for the scroll bars. The same thing works for the uh, vertical scroll bars, which is V scroll bar. And there's one more, track bar. Is that the last one? Track bars work the very same way. So um, where are they? Are there no track bars in C sharp? Is that be oh, right here, track bar. And they look like the same thing. And they have the they have the minimum and they have the maximum, the default values and you know the uh, the ticks and whatnot, the small change and where's the large change? Is there no large change? Large change up here. So these guys work the very same way. So I'll delete that. Okay, now the last thing I have to show you are menu strips. So this is probably the funnest. And oh goodness, to go on to menu strips and create a menu strip. And let's paste it up here. So anytime you see the words type here like that, grayed out, that means it's not visible. So if we run the application. Uh, we won't see anything. So we see it highlighted. We see a little toolbar up there, but there's nothing there. So we can type there and put a word like, so this one and that one are not visible, so don't worry. So there I'll type in like um, file. I'll have the word file there. Um, if I go down one below, I can have that one say, whoops, open. I can have this one say save, something like that. I can have this one say close. And then maybe throw out another one that says uh, help. And then below that, maybe the about, which might open another, fo um, another form that has the about information, like your name on it or something. And if we run this application, you know, we have all these different things. But uh, you see, open and save should be its own thing, right? And close should be separated. Well, we can actually throw in our own separator bar. So right click save and go to properties no no insert and insert a separator and it was inserted above it so let's move it down below there we go and if we run this now we have a little separator bar in between these so it's own, it's own, it's it is its own little section we can also throw in sub menus as well so maybe if we do this we could add in a save as or something like that even though save as would technically be below it so but I just want to show you um, how that would work. So you press F5, and so we have our save, and you could save it as. This can have its own code too, by the way. You can actually make it to, if you click this, um, it has its own code. So uh, how do we actually go about um, throwing in our own code? Well, I'll just throw you the close, because since, since I don't really have time to do anything complex. Let's double click the close, and type in this.close. And that's it, right? That's all it does to close. So if I press F5 and I go to the close, it'll then close the form for us. So that's really, really cool. You can also throw in short keys, shortcut keys. So in order to do that, um, first make sure show shortcut keys is uh, checked so you'll see them. And then we can, can we insert short keys, keys that way? No. Let's just go to the properties, which is this stuff over here. So go down to shortcut keys. Here they are. You have none. You can do any combination of these. I'll just use the control and I'll just do control C is copy, so I don't want to use that. Let's use control. Let's do control F4. So it's like alternate F4, but control F4 instead. So that's going to be our shortcut key, control F4. It'll print there. Press F5. And we have close control F4. So if we hit control F4, Four, where is it? Now it closed it for us. So that's really, really cool. So that's all about I wanted to show you. Um, I hope this entire playlist for C Sharp Level 1 helped you for whatever purpose you needed this for, whether it be school or work. And uh, hopefully I'll see you either in Level 2, when I make it, or another programming language. So I'll see you there.